Okay. Uh, good morning. I am back with more experiments on this uh, Thopter Bridge deck. And um, the variant that we have this morning, uh, yesterday I tried Chalice of the Void. I was pretty impressed with it. And uh, I feel like it's a card that's good in our worst matchups. And you know, it doesn't hurt as much in our best matchups. Um, so I've decided to oh, uh, go a little deeper on that. And I wanted a couple copies of Teleria West to be able to find uh, Chalice a little bit more often. And also, uh, you know, I realized that in a lot of matches, the, the card that we want to draw the most is, like, Welding Jar. Um, so, like, getting a few Teleria Wests, they come into play tap, so it's not without a cost. But um, I feel like it could help us significantly uh, in some of the, like, attrition-based matchups. And then... Um, we tried Liliana of the Veil yesterday, she was fine, but uh, Gear Pro Aether Grid solves a lot of problems for the deck, like it can kill Kataki, it can kill Gaddic Teague, uh, it can kill Planeswalkers, and uh, at this point I think it's worth, like Glimmer Void and Spire of Industry are not very expensive sources of red mana, and if we're not under Stony Silence we also get Mox Opals, and I think it's worth playing like these red mana sources. Hey, Shadow Popo. Uh, I consider going to fetch mana base to maximize Bobble. Yeah. Um, my experience is that against decks like Burn in particular, but um, even decks like Dredge, where uh, they're putting your life total under significant pressure, uh, I think the fetch mana base actually kills you. Like, the number of games where I, like, stop at one or two are considerable. So, like, the extra tutoring from Bobble is nice, but I think you're giving up more percentage against uh, other matchups. Um, and then, yeah, so I think this is the build that I'm going to play around with today. Uh, obviously, the fetch mana base is also better against Blood Moon. Um, but I think there are just, it seems like there's so few Blood Moons these days. Uh, the fetch mana base also exposes you, uh, to the mill deck. And obviously, like, the mill deck isn't a huge part of the metagame, but searching your library does let them use their archive trap. Whereas, uh, you know, with this build, um, your only card that searches is were, and if you always were for Witchbane Orb, uh, they can never archive trap you, at least not for the zero cost. Um, I mean, obviously they have their own fields of ruin where they can try and force you to search your library, but um, so I, I think you get more resilience by not playing fetches than you gain advantage from. Bobble and Blood Moon. Obviously, the metagame could shift. Like, if there are a lot more Blood Moons, I'd be into it. If, um, like, Burn or, like, the Mono Red Arclight Phoenix deck and Dredge all kind of, like, disappeared or became, like, small parts of the metagame, I would go over to Fetch Mana Base. So, it's, it's metagame dependent. Um, you know, I, I don't want to underplay the value of, you know, being able to kind of get a free look with your bauble and then decide whether or not you want your next card. Like, that's significant, significant deck manipulation. Okay, so this hand, uh, we have, it's not a great hand, uh, it has half of the Thopter Sword combo, uh, no were, um, and like Spyglass, which is very important in some matches, but can be like poor in others, uh, but we do have the mana to were, and I think we top deck pretty well, 
So in the dark, I'm going to keep this hand, but I think it's at the very low end of our keep range. And there's almost no chance that they're mono red, but uh, I do want to play these artifacts out before they can be, you know, countered or on the chance that they are actually an Eidolon of the Rebel deck. You know, you just never want to get caught by the Eidolon. Kind of will be curious to see if we ever activate Teleria. Yeah, I'm very curious about that. So we're playing against Dredge. Double Shriekhorn. It's weird that they didn't play one of the Shriekhorns the previous turn. I'm trying to think about what that means about their hand. That said, um, Spyglass is going to be pretty good against the Shriekhorns. So we have the option of either casting Thopter Foundry this turn, and then next turn Whirring for Sword of the Meek, and we'll be able to make one Thopter on that turn. Or we can Foundry now. I didn't realize your username is different than your Twitch. Did I play against you sometime in the last week? Yeah, I think we played. I think I think we've actually played twice, and I think you've beaten me both times. Uh, I think. Uh, my version of, you know, whatever you want to call this deck is just a huge dog to, uh, like, tradition Grixis were. Um, I thought the games were pretty fun, though. Um, so, their Shriekhorns seem like the main way they're dredging. I'm going to go ahead and run with the Spyglass here. So they'll get, you know, to mill four cards. But I think it's going to slow them down quite a bit. Um, you know, an active Thopter Foundry plus Sword is, you know, fairly powerful. All right, so they don't have any enablers in their hand. And, you know, in general, like, Shriekhorn isn't strong enough that I want to play it for this matchup. I'm not so sure that Spyglass is the right line there. Like, I think I would use... If I was at a tournament, I'd probably Foundry there. Um, I kind of just wanted to see how it plays out. Right, like, even though we Pithy Needle their Shriekhorn... It, they still are pretty much just going off. And, you know, they'd go off harder if they could, you know, mill another four with the Shriekhorns. I think, yeah, we, you think we have plenty of time. Um, so here we can whir for Sword of the Meek. Uh, that doesn't make any Thopters this turn. Uh, alternatively, we can Thopter Foundry the Welding Jar is not going to do anything, so we could turn the Welding Jar into a Thopter uh, and not really cost us anything. So I think uh, they also can Loam to get like Tarn, but they, they have more than one land, so like Sorcerer's Spyglassing a land doesn't really do anything here. Uh, but if we were for a sword this turn and we foundry next turn, we get to make a lot more thopters next turn. So I think we're going were this turn. The other option is bridge, but bridge just is too small to stop anyone. So we'll we'll just we'll wait here. They flip another chill. I still don't have a conflagrate. Uh, you know, the most dangerous thing would be if they got us down to 10 so that their blood gas could get in here. 6, 7, 8. So we'll take this. And then we're going to whir and start rebuilding our life total with the Thopter Foundry.
blue, blue. One, two. So we'll get Sword of the Meek. best draw there would have been I think just another Mox so we could have made another Thopter but this will this will do. So we get to make three Thopters here. We're looking at getting hit by a Narc Amoeba uh, plus any blood gas that they're able to get into play. So if we had uh, Foundry on turn two and sort of the make on turn three, last turn we would have been able to make four Thopters and this turn we would have made five Thopters. So I think I think we could see that. I mean, it's hard to know how much more effective their hand would have been. But I think if we had you know like thirteen total thopters and that much more life, uh, we'd be in a, a stronger position here. We're for bridge into empty your hand next turn. Uh, so just emptying our hand isn't going to be enough. Like, they would probably just burn us out if we followed that line. Like, eight isn't, is, isn't enough life. Like, we need an active way of improving our life, life total from there. This Dark Blast isn't going to stop our Thopter from, or Sword from coming back. I think Sword of the Meek is played rarely enough that people, I think, are often under that impression. And will often try and interact with your first, uh, you know, Thopter to try and stop it. Uh, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we need to we need to block at least this. We could kill Bloodgast, but it just comes back. But then we do have an extra Thopter for next turn. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll take seven and go to one. Right, and they've gone very wide here. Uh, the best draw there would have been like KCI, so we could just go infinite or were as an additional copy of KCI. We'll keep this one. They have no conflagrate in the sideboard, or you know, in the graveyard at this point. So we have six mana sources, chill, so we need to get out of this chill range. Now they have a conflagrate. I think, yeah, I think. I think we're just dead to the conflagrate here. So, yeah, I think the spyglass line probably was bad. Like, I think we could have had 13 more life than this. And they're just powering up for a giant conflagrate. So we'll go to game two. Are they thinking about doing anything different? I mean, if our opponent... Cage is not in the main, that's right, Fitch. We have Cage in the sideboard, uh, but for the most part, X equals seven. So we bring back four guys, and we're at one. One, two, three, yeah, that's, that's good enough. Oh, we could regenerate one of them. What does this look like? I think we're dead. Uh, 
Oh yeah, regenerating it's still it's tapped, so yeah, we're we're dead for that for sure. So close, but I think uh, the spyglass didn't help us enough. So uh, game two, we're gonna bring in Graph Digger's Cage so we can go after their graveyard. Uh, they're probably also gonna bring in things like Ancient Grudge. I think, in general, uh, Spell Skate is going to need more for us than Spyglass. And, right, like it just blocks ground guys. Um, is Chalice good against them? Chalice is pretty slow, they're mostly just dredging. So I guess we trim Chalices. And... So I'm new to having Chalice in the deck, so thinking about... Oh, we don't need Damping Sphere. Uh, we could put Ego in. Ego is not bad. Like, it can take out their paths to burning us. Or, like, Grudge. Yeah, it's not our, like... Chalice to get their Faithless Lootings. Huh. Ego's slow, but I do like what it does. So let's let's try it here. Let's see how it works. We'll definitely play first. Uh, this hand, I think, is solid. Like, we have the mana sources we need to just curve into Ensnaring Bridge and then Orb, which, uh, so we'll play this tapped. Uh, right, they can conceivably have a Destruction spell for the bridge, so if we don't find a Welding Jar or Spell Skite, they have the potential to just blow up the bridge. Uh, they do have a bunch of ancient grudges, so they're actually very likely to blow up the bridge if we don't find like the right interactive piece. Um, that said, like cracking the bauble would mean that our hand size is bigger and that the bridge won't necessarily be effective. So I think we're hoping to like naturally draw spell skite or welding jar here. Pretty solid hit on their amalgams. Okay, so we get to bridge here. And I would say our, our draw steps here have been like substantially below par. Uh, just hitting extra lands is exactly the opposite of what we want to hit. And, you know, th this is the kind of situation where having looting to smooth out your draws is very attractive. So, if we were to hit, I mean, they're going to hit us for 11. And if we don't draw, like, a zero casting cost artifact next turn, this bridge isn't stopping the creatures here. Uh, bottled Cloister might save us here. Like a war for Bottled Cloister would be pretty good. But we, uh, three, we don't actually have enough permanents in play to do that. And I think they could still conflagrate us out. It was, uh, just on a forum saying that the dredge matchup is pretty easy, and I, I think it is. Um, but man, it sure doesn't look very good right now. Yeah, so just run over here. Um, I think I think we played game one poorly, 
and game two, like we just drew poorly. Uh, in general, I think the matchup's pretty good. I think like, I think I'm like 60-40 with this deck archetype in general. Maybe a little better than that. But, uh, you know, they certainly have some explosive draws. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about it. I'm... Yeah, I think the Spyglass line was probably wrong. You think we kept too slow of a hand game, too? Uh, I mean, I think on the play, that hand isn't necessarily too slow. It's just like, if you draw all lands, it goes really badly. Like, I would keep that hand again. And I think most of the time it works out. So here we get to cast, you know, Chalice on one on turn one. We could also just, you know, cast Thopter Foundry on turn one. Uh, who plays Peak? Are they a combo deck or a control deck? Probably a combo deck, right? Chalice and one. I think we do Chalice and one. So this. This is going to be very good against a lot of the decks in the format. Oh, sure. Fish. Uh... Chalice doesn't do a lot against Merfolk, actually. But uh, Merfolk are really bad against Ensnaring Bridge. So we'll just get a bridge out before they have any counter magic up. And uh, now it's possible that they have Echoing Truth, some, some of their builds have that as an option. And since uh, in this Chalice version we're not playing any spell skites, uh, we need to think about how we're going to deal with Echoing Truth down the line. Yeah, I thought it might be a Kiki Jiki deck at first also. But yeah, I guess Peak is standard in Burfolk, which I'm not exactly sure why they're into that. All right, so there we have Teleria West. And We have our win condition of Thopter Foundry in play. Like Sword, we don't really care if Sword gets countered. So I think we might actually just want to get another Chalice and put it on X equals two. Almost everything in their deck costs two. And Echoing Truth, which is I think they're mostly likely out in the situation, costs two. Um, you know, we'd end up turning off a lot of our own cards. But I think that's fine. Um, we do need to cast a card this turn so that we can't be attacked. So I'm just going to play out the Spyglass. Uh, yeah, they can't cast the Mist Caller. They can't cast the Ether Vial. I don't think there's really anything that they can sacrifice for at this point. I'm just going to name Mutavolt. The land. Do you mean Mutavolt or are you thinking of a different land? Yeah. So, you know, turn off their man land. And... Yeah, everyone's favorite. Oh, Cavern of Souls means that <laughs> putting Chalice on two is only going to stop their Echoing Truth, but that's fine. Um, I guess we'll, we'll cast Cloyster here. Cloyster will take the pressure off of us to keep casting these spells so that we can actually 
Teleria West for what we want. And they haven't conceded, which tells me that they probably do have Echoing Truth in their deck. Like my usual experience with Merfolk is once they see your win condition and the fact that they can't attack, uh, they often just scoop it up. I should have cast the Mist Color with the Cavern of Souls, then it would have gone right through the, the Chalice. Unless they're trying to like storm something here. Spreading Seas, sure. I guess, hypothetically, we could just be sacrificing these Welding Jars to the Thopter Foundry and start clocking them. So... I guess we'll get that plan started a little bit. We'll transmute to Larry West. To a Chalice of the Void. And we'll cast that next turn. We'll turn one of these Welding Jars into a Thopter 2 and just start beating in for 2. So the Bottle Cloister is exiling our hand on our opponent's upkeep. If they have an Echoing Truth here, it's bad for us, but I don't think they have it yet. Merfolk. I'm wondering, I'm just looking through the goldfish list to see how common echoing truth is not that common all right so they've given up on the idea that they can get past this bridge interesting that bottled cloister is what persuaded them so chalice pretty weak in this matchup um spell skite is good against potential echoing truths uh, Welding Jar doesn't really do much here. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker could name their Ether Vial. We don't need Damping Sphere for sure. You like Grid and Tez. Certainly, I mean, their guys, if you don't draw the Grid early, their guys just get really big. Um, they don't need Witchbane Orb. Uh, Grid and Tez. They're both kind of expensive and can mess up your bridges, but I guess they're making their guys incredibly large. Yeah, this is this is a match where you know, I guess because we don't have a faithless looting type card and that void it like chalice isn't very good. We're just looking at a bunch of weird things. I guess we just play two chalices. It's still like a zero casting cost artifact. I'm not sure how much I like Tezzerite here. But it's probably just better than a random void like chalice. They're just they're very fast. Merfolk doesn't really play much that stops your combo pieces from working. Like, mm, I do, I do like the pithy needle type effects, like turning off vial. This deck in particular, you know, wants to play its guys with its vial and leave its mana open for counter magic. So, I don't know, I mean, they do have Vile for one, but they always cast that in turn one. 
So they have like Curse Catcher and Mist Caller as one drops. Yeah, the Chalice just doesn't do a ton. But it might just be better to have like a blank Chalice that you could throw down for zero than to have like Tezzeret, which is a four CMC card that you might have trouble getting rid of. Uh, this hand only has one land. And I think like the Ironworks we don't really want in our hand. I think we can do better than this. These are all cards that we're not super excited about. I guess we'll keep this. Uh, hopefully this hand has the, the hidden technology, which is it's small so that at the point at which we draw uh, a bridge, like our hand is basically empty. Uh, I've had some people comment that they think that Opal isn't that good, or sometimes doesn't look good. Certainly the hands where you draw a double opal seem like some of the worst hands. And it makes me wonder, you know, if the curve is lower, the opals are amazing, but as your curve goes up, the opals get weaker. And so I wonder if, like, we finally hit a version of the deck where the curve is high enough that maybe we should only be playing like three opals. Yeah. Also, as I added a Teleria West, it really made me want to play um, a Tormod script. Like, I think one of the really difficult matches is KCI, and what makes it difficult is, right, you get your Damping Sphere in play, but then they eventually just start spining you. And if we have a good answer to spine, like, uh, Tor Tormont's Crypt stops the spine from coming back from the graveyard, then, um, you know, then you only get, like, spined once, and, you know, you usually have, like, a Welling Jar or a Spell Skate to eat the first spine effect. It's really, like, the recursion of spine that gets you. Uh, you can Ego Spine, but you kind of have to Ego KCI first. And that means it's, you don't usually have the, like, the ego left to also ego the spine. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have, like, Whirr plus Revoker, so you can Revoker KCI, then you can ego spine. But I've played that match a ton. It's really hard. Uh, they have the Deprive. It's too bad. The Lord of, this Lord of Atlantis, despite being a 3-3, if it was targeted by the grid, would would explode. So our opponent has, you know, kind of the, the merfolk dream, which is, you know, they have vials going so they, they can just instant speed in their guys and then a grip full of counter magic. So, you know, the grid would have been amazing. I would have been able to kill both of the phantasmal images. But we just kind of blanked there. I mean, you know, milling low is fine. I think this is, this is, maybe Onward Ego is actually, like, for their counter magic might be what, where we want to be. Like, if they just counter Tezzeret... He's also expensive. I think this is I think this is where I want to be. Uh, when you say what am I cutting for it? What is it? Um for ego. I cut the two Tezzerets and the two chalices. Like, I think Tezzer is very likely to just cycle. All right, like, Merfolk are... Like, either we have an Instaring Bridge down already and we're winning, or, 
you know, we get to t plus one Tesseret, and then, like, they kill him. So th this hand, uh, you know, an Ironworks in hand isn't where we want it, but we do have a war to try and get our Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, Spellskite might block if they don't, you know, start island walking us. Might block once or twice and buy us like a turn worth of time. Um, you know, in general, like four lands is more than we want, and Ironworks is a card we'd much rather have be in our library and fetch out with a whir than in hand. But, you know, I think on the play, we obviously, like, any anything we do to set up a bridge is better. And uh, mulligating too hard for, like, exactly the right hand is dangerous. Especially against, like, a deck that has, like, some counter magic. Like, if you just mulligan for, like, the one perfect card and they counter it, you're kind of out of luck. I have a really hard time mulligating any hand that includes War of Invention and the mana to cast it. Uh, but, like, right, I do, I do feel without having any deck manipulation effect. Like, I want to I want to try Ideas Unbound in here, which is uh, draw three cards for blue-blue. At the beginning of the next end step, discard three cards. Because, like, in your opening hands, you can, you know, fix your hand and it's a draw three, discard three. But later in the game, when you're, like, hellbent, you can cast it, and then, let's say you draw, like, a land, a cheap artifact, and an expensive artifact. You, like, play the land, cast both of your artifacts, and the card was a draw three. And people have talked about playing Reverse Engineer, which is like blue-blue three and has Improvise. And like that's clearly a stronger card in the mid to late game, where you're always going to have these artifacts sitting around. And like a draw three isn't likely to hurt you. But in the early game, you don't necessarily have those artifacts. And like you actually don't always want to get plus three cards in your ensnaring bridge deck. Um, like one of the reasons Faithless Looting is so good in this deck is because you know, it's not in this particular build, but it's in some builds that I play, is because it decreases your hand size. So I think Ideas Unbound is likely to be better than Reverse Engineer, if I can ever figure out, you know, what I'm supposed to cut to include it. Uh, so second War is good news, uh, I feel like, against this opponent who could well have counter magic. Um, you know, having just like a redundant way to make a bridge is nice. Also, this hand has some like kind of expensive cards. So being able to whir for like a bottled cloister can make it so it doesn't matter that our hand is too small. All right, so we just naturally do a bridge, which is fantastic. And we have our spell sky, you know, that, that can protect it from something like Echoing Truth. Uh, they're more focused currently at 2-2 and obviously like we have four cards in hand. But all the, all the scary things they can do involve multiple lords making their guys bigger. So I don't think they have any way to, you know, pump at instant speed. Like they have Dismember, but that can just kill the spell sky anyway. Wow, all the words. Uh, Worrying for Cloister seems pretty safe. We don't have enough permanence in play to work for Cloister yet. So I think I'm just going to play this Ironworks. Um, right, if they play another Lord at this point, yeah. 
So lots of people, like, they're just trained that ironworks is dangerous and, like, if they let an ironworks resolve, they're way more likely to lose. Uh, for us, it's just, like, it's kind of a nice perk where, you know, we can ironworks <coughs> to make our Thopter sword combo go infinite instead of just very slowly make Thopters. I still think there's not a Lord with Flash. Um, so, you know, an opponent countering our war is often, like, pretty good. Uh, yeah, we can war for Thopter Sword next. I think that's, that's likely where this is going. Uh, if they tap out, we'll do it. Otherwise, I like doing another, I guess, on their end step. Let's see. So they could draw another counter spell, but one, two, three. I'd like to leave spell pierce up, and to do that, mana for spell pierce up. To do that, I'd have to tap the spell skate for this war. So I want to have combat first, even though I, uh, I guess we would have just shut both of them off. So it would be better to do it during their upkeep for sure. We could have saved ourselves that three damage. All right, so blue, blue. Blue, one, two. I guess the only thing we really ended up playing around was Remand. So my expectation is that they have another counter spell here, probably they Deprive. No, oh, they let it resolve. So we'll get the Thopter Foundry. Play this opal. And now, since they didn't have a counter spell there, I mean, maybe they know that Foundry alone doesn't beat them. But I'm going to whir on their upkeep. Blue, 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 one, two. So we'll try and get sword here. And so it seems to me that they probably have, um, you know, more spell pierces. And so they just didn't have the mana, like, we had enough mana that they couldn't stop us. You know, we don't really care about Master of the Pearl Trident. Uh, I guess they countered our Ironworks, so kudos to them for that. So here, they could play a Surgical Extraction, and we're going to play around that by not using all of our mana to make Thopters. Uh, you know, if they cast Surgical Extraction, our response is going to be to sacrifice the Mox Opal. Or maybe the Spell Skate at this point, but probably the Mox Opal. To the Thopter Foundry, uh, create another Thopter, and create a trigger that the sword is going to return to uh, before the surgical extraction responds and then you know, let the surgical extraction go off. So uh, Merfolk is an example of a deck where um, having the combo doesn't it's not really enough um their merfolk gets so big and they can be unblockable so you can't chump with your thopters that you actually just need to embrace the prison part of your deck and the thopter part is is pretty incidental uh, like it can buy you a little bit of time but uh, this matchup is really all about the ensnaring bridge prison aspect of our deck so, um, I'm not using this last whir um, on the off chance that they have some sequence of cards that's like Dismember Your Spell Skite, Echoing Truth Your Ensnaring Bridge. I want to be able to like flash this other bridge into play. And 
and also I think that like making Thopters with this mana is going to increase our clock by a turn as opposed to using the word to do something. Uh, yeah, Hercules Recall is... Yeah, the re I mean, we brought up the Unmoored Egos, and certainly one of the reasons we have Unmoored Ego is to name Hercules Recall. We did take Witchbane out. Yeah, that was a mistake. We should have left the Witchbane in, I forgot. I think we, we learned the hard way that Witchbane Orb is actually quite good in this matchup because it stops Hercules Recall. So if they have the recall, uh, they don't have enough Merfolk currently in play to kill us, because we gain a lot of life. And I think the War actually plays around it. We have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, 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 because then we just have a ton of cards in hand, so it doesn't really work. I don't think casting a second bridge does anything for us, so we'll just keep holding that. Yeah, I need to go back and uh, add uh, Witchbane Orb for, to my sideboard notes for this matchup. Yeah, here we go. I'm seeing an echoing truth coming here. Ooh, Venser, sure. So... I think... I guess we should play the second bridge. Fair. One... Two, three... I guess we should let them have Venser come into play and target something. Yeah. So we'll go blue, blue, blue. One, two, three. Get another ensnaring bridge. So, uh, we were thinking about all the worst case uh, hate cards. Another Venser. Alright. I mean, we're not going to be dead here. We're just going to take a bunch of damage and then have to, like, recast. Uh, I guess unless they have... Yeah, even another Lord doesn't really do it. taking less damage than we have life. We'll just kill this Fencer here. And we have we have the nine power to like kill them on the attack back. Oh we could have redirected to this guy. It, it wasn't still turned off, you're right. Yeah, this deck is so good that you can make a few mistakes and have it still turn out pretty well. Yeah, we, we could have redirected the bounce effect to the sky. I was thinking the uh, it loses its abilities until the beginning of the next turn, at the beginning of the next end step.
All right, this hand just has one land. I think we're obligated to ship, even though it has lots of cool disruption pieces. Uh, this hand is not great, but it does, it has, it's actually pretty good. It has a war. It has a lot of good disruption pieces. You know, we don't, like, the only thing that's really bad is that it has the Spyglass in hand. So the Teleri West, we almost certainly need as a mana source here. This damping sphere is going to be incredibly painful to this kind of storm style aggro deck. Instead of being able to just rattle off a ton of spells for this Kiln Fiend to get huge, you know, instead they're going to be able to cast like one or two spells a turn. Uh, next turn we'll get the bridge out. I think a lot of their spells are at instant speed so they can pump after attacking. So like, uh, the Kiln Fiend's mostly going to get under the bridge. Huh. Do you cast this at the beginning of your next turn? Yeah, so this will count for the Damping Sphere. Might not matter though. This Kiln Fiend's a ferocious clock. Uh, Chalice though will counter their one CMC spell. I think Chalice is actually better than Bridge here. Like, we know at the very least they're distortion striking, so this is preventing. Oh, but this is whenever you cast it, so it doesn't even matter if it resolves. Huh. Actually, cancel. So, the distortion strike is going to trigger the Kiln Fiend. So if we... Uh, our Damping Sphere is... I was thinking I was going to cast this Chalice of the Void for zero, but we have to pay one for it. Uh, but if they target the Kiln Fiend with a Distortion Strike, the Kiln Fiend would get another power and not be able to attack. Yeah, okay. So do they have to target it? We your next step, you, you may cast this card. So they probably should have cast it. Um, so we can work for two, but that doesn't really do anything. So I think we're supposed to chalice for one here. I guess we could chalice for zero and cast Spyglass. And then next turn we'd be able to get Bottle Cloister. That sounds better. Like we just want to build a prison that can't get through. Like, and it'll. Having three cards in hand makes it so that their Kiln Fiend can't attack after any spell. So they have a bunch of ones. Chalice is pretty nice in this matchup, though it doesn't exactly work. <laughs> so uh, the problem with Chalice on one is that the Kiln Fiend is all on cast triggers. And so, like, the Kiln Fiend gets the plus three, plus zero, oh, even if the spell doesn't resolve. So, like, even though Chalice and One would be hilariously good here, um, we actually just need it so that we have three or fewer cards in hand so that the Ensnaring Bridge can keep them from attacking us. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, right, they're going to get two spell triggers in here. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe 
probably much smarter than I think I am. I need to cast surgical extraction. Oh, gut shot for one. Wow. All right, I'm less smart than I think I am. If we chalice for one, we would have been fine there. Yeah. Okay. Um, lesson learned. So we don't really need to go infinite. Like any blocker would have been fine. They're not really targeting us. They're probably, maybe they are. Like lightning bolts. Damping sphere seems good against them. Chalice seems good against them. Damping sphere seems good against them. Spell skite seems. Oh, spyglass does not seem good. This feels a lot more like a spell skite matchup. And. I think we probably need to bring in like one grid just in case they come after our win conditions. Distortion strike is pretty good, but I think I guess the spell skate helps with that. I think we run this. We'll play first. So we have Thopter Sword here uh, with a welling jar of protection. Uh, they did have main deck surgical, so we're going to have to be careful to play around that. Like, never tapping our last mana source. Uh, so we're going to play this tapped. And then just jam out the jar on the bauble. Uh, next turn, we'll cast the sword, uh, right, yeah, let's see, do I want to crack this ball? We're not really, like, playing a bridge, yeah, I think we crack the ball. If we can get a chalice for one, I guess we probably, huh, chalice doesn't really stop this guy, that's fascinating. Pithing Needle is actually a good effect against him. Alright, so we can cast this. And we'll cast our foundry. And in theory, next turn if we play if we draw another zero, we could were for I guess we can't were for KCI, we took it out. presents, like, I'm sure it's somewhat inconsistent, but this, this deck presents a hell of a clock. Or it can. I like the Nevmagus elements, I haven't seen this for a long time. Okay. So, if we play Sword... We don't really get to play around Surgical Extraction. Uh, we could Teleria West looking for Chalice. We have an alternate win condition. We could also go for Bridge. Going for Bridge seems actually a little bit better to me, given that they could be playing Surgical Extraction. Like, we can empty our hand next turn, and if they cast spells before combat, 
like we could potentially kind of get them here because they, they can't see the bridge so they're not necessarily thinking about the bridge stopping them like it's just habit to cast these during the main phase because some of them are sorceries so it's easier to string them together Like, if they cast a gut shot here, they're going to feel pretty sad. There we go, there's the mutagenic growth. So we're actually going to stop their whole team with a bridge, just because it was not predictable. <laughs> All right, good sequencing for us. Um, still like this configuration. You know, I'm keeping the welding jars are cheap, and I just have no idea how much artifact interaction they have. Uh, Sorcerer Spyglass is like usable on the Niv Magus Elemental, but we have no guarantee that they're going to actually like play that card or use its ability. If I had pithing needles, I might look at it. Alright. Um, this sounds like... Not great. We don't have bridge, we don't have foundry. Like the spell skite with a couple welding jars can eat some like big hits. If they go wide, we're not in that good of a shape. The spell skite is good against their pump spells though. I think we keep this, I think it's, ah, but we could have like chalice instead. This has to be like below average. I think we mulligan. Alright, so we'll keep this one. Uh, second war, so we get two artifacts in play on turn three. Yeah, I think we keep this. So next turn we get to cast Sword, and then the following turn we can Thopter Foundry, and then the following turn we can Bridge. Uh, this is maybe a match where like keeping KCI in would have been useful. Like they're pretty good at doling out a lot of fast damage, and the option of making our Thopter Swords go infinite seems pretty appealing. Wow. So explosive. This deck's kind of amazing. Um, I guess, I mean, they only have one card left, so they've used up most of their gas. Probably. So we can get three and one more spell in. Kill the fiend. They have one uncast spell. I can't help but feel that that spell is likely to be surgical extraction 
Call me a pessimist. So the, these guys can both attack and get pumped, and then they deal six. So I think it could be like a gut shot. I guess there's no point in casting a spell right now, right? Whether or not we bridge or Thopter Foundry, it's all an instant speed choice based on what our opponent does. Alright, so they cast the spell pre-combat. So that means that a bridge is going to turn off their Kiln Fiend. So one, two, three. If this is like a spell pierce, we're dead. We died to like exactly mutagenic growth here. If it's a dispel, you should now. If it's removal for one of your Thopter, then it matters. Yeah. Thought Scour. <laughs> All right. So we can take this three. I haven't seen any lightning bolts yet from their deck. I think we just need to go for Cloister here and hope that we don't get bolted. Two, three, four. I don't think we can rely on Thopters. that distortion strike rebounding and like probably a surgical extraction in their hand. War for orb. Yeah, if we if we get to untap and war for orb, I think that we're just in the clear. Um, like we'll eventually draw our grid to kill them. Um, if, even if they like extraction or thopter foundries. Obviously, we could also draw like Chalice and Chalice for one, and it seems like it would turn off nearly 100% of their deck, if not actually 100%. Gut shot it, <laughs> alright. <laughs> yeah, Thopters were definitely not going to get there. So we'll whir for four. One, two, three, four. And get our Witchbane Orb. And that should, yeah, end the game. Go being a prison deck. A braid is still bad. I don't think they play a braid. Like, that thing costs two mana. I think the only two mana thing they had was Kiln Fiend. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing that deck had, I don't know, 15 to, 15 to 18 lands. But probably like 17 tops. Like that's just like a old school like grow style deck. I think a braid or smash is like the only other out they potentially have. Yeah, that's entirely possible. 
I think. I mean, we could have. No, we had bottled cloisters, so we needed to commit before we saw what they're going to do. I think Witchbane Orb gets you out of that situation most of the time. We had five lands in play. So I guess conceivably a Thopter Foundry would have like put our life total outside of that burn reach, and if they had smashed the smithereens, it would have saved us the three damage from the smash. So it, it might have been safer to cast the Opter Foundry there than to cast Witchbane Orb. Uh, but maybe like Thopter Foundry doesn't beat Lightning Bolt? I don't think it beats Lightning Bolt. So this hand, I don't know, we got the turn one, turn one Chalice for one. I think we're supposed to keep all of those. This is exactly what we're trying to test today. Spell bomb. Uh, I wonder if we're playing some kind of mirror. Like, who plays Knee Hill Spell Bomb if I'm a Dark Steel Citadel? Some kind of KCI, maybe? Cost an extra mana, so that would be a weird thing for KCI to play. Are we just playing against like a lantern control deck? Howling Mine. No idea. Yeah, this is uh we're in unknown territory. Definitely don't want to crack these bubbles though. I feel like I'm gonna have plenty of cards. Um I guess we'll spyglass for more information. Like, what is going on here? Slider Requisitioner. Scrap Trawler, Ironworks. So this is like an Ironworks variant. We'll name the Nihil Spellbomb. No reason to let them recur that. And I think I think we're gonna to want to set chalice to another number. So I'm gonna save this to Larry West. And that number might be zero. Uh, it'll hurt both of us. Mem Knight. It seems like they're planning on going like wide with tokens and their list isn't necessarily good their their current record is 01 this is the thought for sword grinding station deck more combo no prison okay so we should name grinding station at some point with a spyglass uh sistral do you have any ideas about like what we want to do with the Chalice of the Void. I'm obviously just going to cast this Incinerating Bridge this turn. I think we clearly don't want a Chalice on two, but it seems like we might be very interested in Chalicing on three or on zero. Also, I imagine they play Engineered Explosives. And we probably should have set the uh, spyglass to engineered explosives. Like explosives are kind of always always the linchpin of this kind of matchup. Well, we have a one already, so the question is like, what is the next chalice on? They have one scrap trawler in play. Four. I'm gonna transmute this. I think since we have another chalice already, 
I'm just gonna get a welling jar to play around explosives. I can get an inventor's fair, that's interesting. We're drawing a zillion cards though. I think I just want this welding jar. Maybe two, shut down founder and aim to were for ours. Uh, how does how does two shut down foundry? Like I think Oh, I guess I see. If we shut down twos Interesting. Uh, no, they're just going to get Sword of the Meeks back. So I think 2 doesn't really do anything for us either. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to do it on 3. Like, we already have one bridge in play. And it stops them from playing another Scrap Trawler. Don't think they can beat Bottled Cloister. Um, if they have, what is the card called? Uh, the Station. Uh, if they have Grinding Station. Oh. Yeah, if they have a Grinding Station, they can easily beat like Bottled Cloister plus Bridge. Like, right, their combo is they're not planning on attacking with this. They're planning on getting 1-1s one to return Sword of the Meek and then just keep using Grinding Station on us. So, like, the Spyglass should have been either on Grinding Station or Explosives. Assuming they have Explosives as a way to fight through Disruption, which I think is pretty standard for any KCI-style deck. Yeah, grinding station. Um, right, I was thinking that, like, right, Knee Hill Spell Bomb isn't really relevant disruption for our deck. It does stop them from, like, putting on Neil Stub, um, it's the only draw engine they showed us. And they do seem to be kind of stuck on cards. So I'm not sure that it was, like, wrong to name it. And, you know, it does also look like they are interested in... Like, they are interested in going infinite on guys and attacking us, so, like, we also need to beat that stage of their plan. Right, because they're, like, sacrifice. Okay. So, we need to empty our hand out. Um... I guess we chalice on zero. Like we have enough of our zeros in play, and it stops explosives from destroying all of our zeros. Yeah, I think that's good. It also stops them from like casting Mem Knight and stuff, or it makes it go directly to the graveyard anyway. Then we're just gonna get this bridge countered. So now we can't get beat down by Thopters or servos. Uh, I think if they have explosives, they can... 
destroyer and steering bridge fairly easily. Yeah, there's the grinding station. So they, they just have infinite. Yep. Oh, <laughs> our top decks were going to be great. So maybe we're supposed to like Tolaria's West for Inventor's Fair and then Inventor's Fair for Damping Sphere. So for Revoker's very good against the stack. Uh, which main arm actually works? Um, I think our Thopter Sword combo isn't going to race them. My experience is like all variants of KCI are just faster. Um, it's unclear. They'll probably have something like Nature's Claim. Uh, Torpor Orb is going to mess up a bunch of their triggers for their Thopter Swords. And Ego is very good against them. Grid. I mean, Grid's like a fine alternate win condition. It's, I mean, it hits that black creature they were using. Might be good. Definitely like Tezzeret to find more prison pieces. Uh, they are kind of targeting us with a grinding station, but this is like a very expensive spyglass. We still might like having another spyglass. So I'll bring in like one grid. You don't think we need four bridges? They're looking at making infinite one ones against us. Like, we can't stop infinite one ones with anything besides bridge. Or are they not making infinite one ones? I think we could trim like one bridge, but I, I wouldn't go below that. I find in these matchups, like where they have just random beaters, you never want to work for a bridge. Like you always want to just draw one naturally. Spell Skype might be better than Welding Jar. They're like blue black. So they don't necessarily have destroy effects, but they might have bounce effects. Right, I think we'll run it this way. I guess I don't even know how good Chalice is or is not against them, but it's probably very good. You saw green. They probably have trophy. I mean, Spellscape also works against trophy. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we keep this. It's not. It's not particularly disruptive. Uh, maybe this is actually just a terrible keep. Like, we don't have Ego or War, which seem like our best cards here. Like, it's possible that, or even like Chalice. Yeah, we, we should have. Sorry. Sorry, Chat. We should have mulliganed that one for sure. Uh, I was just excited about. Well, I guess it worked out. But, uh, do we want to spell skate here, or Chalice here? We chalice and just like slow down their plan. It's better than spell skating and chalicing for two. Yeah. Like they just have a bunch of eggs and not letting them cast their eggs is. Hey, Tug Tug. Uh, pretty good. Um, you know, just playing around with different versions of this deck, which makes me pretty happy. How are you doing? There's a Thopter Foundry, right? So they also have like the same infinite combo that we do. Yeah, I think Bridge is actually really good in this matchup. And I, don't, I think if we make it to game three, we don't want to cut any bridges. So 
So we can cast Grid or Skite. Casting Grid's more mana efficient. But we have plenty of mana. So I think we'll, we'll cast Skite here. Like we can't, there's nothing we can Grid to death. Um, we're playing against some unknown KCI variant, which is interesting. They have Infinite Thopter Foundry, they have Grindstone. They have like Ornithopter. It's not entirely clear what's going on. I guess we could kill their Ornithopter. So I don't know if that's relevant, but we could kill a Scrap Trawler now. So I think we want this grid in play. Uh, that makes it easier for us to kill. I'd rather deal with a Thopter than an Ornithopter. So I'm really hoping we get to resolve an Unmoored Ego against them. And actually see what their deck is up to. Because um, A, it would let us sideboard better for game three, but B, um, yeah, I just I like seeing when people have weird decks, like what they're up to. So I don't think they're casting a scrap trawler. I don't think our like life total is in particular danger. But I don't see any downside to killing this Thopter here. I do like that they're grinding themselves. Like grind station is a kind of like combo win condition that also enables their own strategy, seems cool to me. Yeah, the Sly Requisitioner was... Yeah, yep, they have exactly that card. Do you know more about their list with that information? So I guess we should think, we can Crack this Inventor's Fair to get uh, a Spyglass. And that actually seems better than casting Bridge. Like, they can't attack us for infinite at instant speed. And I think having a Spyglass on either Thopter Foundry or Grinding Station is going to be solid. self-milling themselves super hard. So there's a trawler. And it's obviously getting resolve. So I think we just want to kill it right here with this trigger on the stack. I guess that means we won't be able to trigger our Inventor's Fair. But I think that's worth getting rid of this Trawler. I guess maybe I was supposed to fare and then kill the Trawler next turn. You saw Seth from MTG go Goldfish right once. Has multiple ways to go infinite, but seems you need to have those figured out. I. Uh, yeah, just because we understand all of them doesn't mean that like we have a plan to stop all of them. Like, uh, Tugga, if you were playing against this matchup, what, like, what would you prioritize in terms of building a defense? Yeah, you think they're doing for a sword? That seems right. So sword lets them go infinite with grinding stone. 
if they have a KCI also. Um, let me see we play this untapped so that we can use the opal to grid and still inventors fair. We can class Foundry and win with Tez Grid. Yeah, we could get Foundry. But if we get Grinding Station... If we get Grinding Station, the Foundry part almost doesn't matter. It might still be better to get Foundry. Right, we took out our own Foundries. Um... Sure, so we'll, we'll glass Thopter Foundry. The, uh, Spyglass and Station would be good to start with this board state. Yeah, so like, Grinding Station gives them a lot of reach against us. Wow, they have double worse. So they can go infinite with Thopters. Um, yeah, I think I think going for Thopter Foundry makes sense here. They'll cast the other grinding station and then start milling us really aggressively. But I think, yeah, we have to go for Thopter Foundry. Like, if they go infinite on life, I'm not sure how we beat them. And the Foundry really will fare for glass and get stationed next. Uh, we just used our fare. So... But we'll, we'll go for Grinding Station next. Um, so like, I understand that we're playing digital, uh, if we, if they go infinite on Thopters, then there's no way for us to kill them. And the match would just come down to time, which we'll lose on. So even though Grinding Station is how they kill us through Bridge, uh, Thopter Foundry is can like make it impossible for us. I'm not exactly sure what they gain by trawlering here though. And I guess they get to recover one of these things. Like another grinding station, they're just gonna go aggro grinding. Like, if we still had our own ability to go infinite, like, or we were playing paper, I think, I think I would have gone for the grinding station. Because then, right, they can't kill us through bridge with Thopters and we could eventually make like our own infinite and it could be bigger than their infinite. Uh, at this point I'm supposed to crack this bauble because I think we want to find an answer to their grinding station. I can't believe this thing costs two. I always thought it cost six. Like, it's so good. Like, I do like that Grinding Station enables your own, like, Thopter combo and gives you a, a non damage path to victory. It's 
So we're about to get ground pretty hard. Oh, I'm forgetting to ping our opponent, which is terrible. I apologize. Blue, blue, blue. One, two. So at this point, we will get another spyglass. And name grinding station. So now we don't care about these and their triggers. jars in play. We have two spell skates though. Oh, we took the welding jars out. I think I actually just want this as a mana source. Like, I conceive of the world in which they go wide on creatures and our hand isn't empty enough. Uh, I once built an extended deck with blasting and grinding station together with enduring renewal and with creatures that either cost zero or turn so that when they died it was fun. Do we get chalice? Uh, what value do you want for Chalice? Uh, like I'm, I'm open to getting Chalice. Switchbane Orb is, I think, an excellent development. Oh, we could transmute for fair. That's true. Because we didn't know they were going to... We'd already hit our second Spyglass. But we could Teleria West for a fair and then have some versatility. Right. So we think their last win condition is just going wide with creatures and beating us down. Yeah, you're right. Having a, a U source in play. We should have we should have fared the Teleri West. Teleri West is kind of new to me today. Recently borrowed technology from the Salt Stacks cruise. Alright, so I'm gonna get this bridge in play before something weird happens and stops us from playing bridge. And then also the spell skite, because it's an artifact and uh, helps us ping down three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Oh, uh, maybe we need to worry about E. Yeah, we do. We don't know if they have it, but E is a serious concern. That's we. That, the Tillier West should have gone for fair, and then fair could have gone for. A spyglass. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we just play this extra opal to get an extra damage in this turn. Uh, I doubt they play E also, but like, I think it's important to think about all the ways that we could conceivably lose. Go destroy all of their non-land permanents. That's true, but all their non-land permanents do nothing. And they could conceivably like have additional copies. Man, these grinding stations are sick in the mirror. Like, they would have milled us so much. You know, they, they have a whir and they haven't used it, which is scary. Like, it either means that we've shut down all of their paths to victory, or they're waiting for, like, another combo 
where they're missing half of that combo. So we get to they're dead on the next turn, so they have to they have to try something here. It's really too bad we didn't get to ego them to see everything that's going on. Um, I think though, I like our sideboarding plan just fine. Might be nice to have one welding jar, but we just, we saw zero destroy effects. Yeah, I think, oh, Damping Sphere doesn't seem like it does anything. So we'll play one Welding Jar, just to have it as an option. You like KCI to counter it, them going infinite? Um, the problem is they have more time than us, so if they actually do get to go infinite, like, they'll just beat us on time. And then we also have to, like, spend slots on Thopter Sword. And I don't think we have this, like, I don't think we have the slots. I mean, we could spend, like, a couple slots on it. Like, if they try and mill us, we're likely to hit one sword. But, yeah. I think if we were playing paper, we would definitely want to have at least access to it ourselves. Because then... I guess if we're both going infinite, we still don't get to go over them. I don't see how we do better than tying them there. So we have a whir. I think whir to shut off their combo is fairly strong. I do like, right, they have Mem Knight to get a nut draw together. That's nice. Oh shit. Sorry. Uh, that's awkward. Bad stop setting. Okay, let's try that again. Next turn we're on Spell Sky. If we don't try land, we didn't really lose much. If we draw a lot, if we do draw land, we're like a whole turn behind. So I got my wish. We have the unmoored ego. Uh, we need another artifact that's cheap or another land to do it. They're not. With Requisitioner, is this just infinite? Amazing. So, Grinding Station, Sly Requisitioner is just another infinite sort of the meat combo. That's cool. I wonder. I wonder if we should appropriate their technology sometime. See how it plays. Like if you're going to have sword, maybe just go heavier on swords. <laughs> like grinding station works really well with sword of the meek, really well. And. 
and Requisitioner is a passive ability. It's like you don't need mana to do it. I guess it's a three card combo instead of a two card combo, but it's infinite on two cards. You tried it and didn't like it. Fair. But what if you have like, I don't know, like a set of requisitioners and then like one Thopter Foundry, so you can like tutor for the Thopter Foundry. And that's obviously not quite as good as the requisitioner, but then you have like half of your pieces are tutorable. And then, right, like you just have like one tutorable bullet for the other half. So if you have like four words, foundry, and like requisitioners, I mean, that's obviously like super combo heavy or moving away from being a prison, but maybe you're like also a faster combo deck sometimes. Okay, we'll keep this. This has a lot of potential. You know, Damping Sphere stops a lot of the fastest combo decks. And then Bridge stops a lot of the aggro decks. We've got several zeros to empty our hand. And with like one more blue source, we can whir. And you know, I think that last matchup is a pretty good demonstration of it can be very hard to play a deck like this against an unknown deck. Like we named Nihil Spell Bomb game one, but if we'd you know known what we were facing, we probably would have named uh, Grinding Station and been like fine. Uh, Goblin Guide is exceptionally good against our deck, not only. You know, is it like a cheap beater? But uh, giving us extra lands is basically the opposite of what we want in life. Like, uh, I think we're gonna have enough permanence to, like, Next turn we'll bridge, and then we can whir for Bottled Cloister. But I'm not sure if that's going to be fast enough here. The Amping Sphere might slow them down a little bit. But their spells are very cheap. Oh, uh, lightning bolt. It's like, how do they cast a lightning helix? A chalice. Prowess just triggers on cast. Uh, this bridge, we have too many cards in hand. Yeah, there's... Like, if we had spell skite in our deck, we could whir for a spell skite and maybe live here. But we don't have any main deck right now because we're playing around with like the leyline variant. So yeah, I don't think there's a path out here. All right, so we got our spell skates. Chalice does seem good. We don't need ironworks to go infinite. Spyglass is really not good here. Damping Sphere isn't, doesn't do much. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker actually just blocks early, which is fine. And I guess having the ability to go infinite, like we could be at pretty low life and that can be handy. Um, this seems good to me. So I'm pretty curious to see like how Chalice plays out in this matchup versus Spellskite. Obviously in that last game, Spellskite seemed like it would have been more desirable. But like on an earlier eh, they might be about the same. And obviously post board we get to have both, which seems incredible. Um, you know, 
it, we still have you know deck fixing, but matches like this, you kind of have minimal amount of time to fix your deck anyway. Uh, I think we keep this. We get to like Chalice into Spellskite. Or spells get into chalice. Um, is main for bridges important at all? Yeah, super important. Like, bridge is often just the best card in a matchup, and like in your opening hands in the dark. Like, if you have a bridge and, like, anything, you probably just keep the hand. So I think Chalice is going to prevent more damage than casting Spellskate here. Um, like, I, I think playing anything less than four bridges just doesn't make much sense. Alright, so Eidolon is basically their best card, and fortunately, like, Word of Invention can go over it, and with this spell skate in play, we're going to start ticking up in life. Uh, Ensnaring Bridge doesn't work great in this situation because we have to cast a spell every turn to keep the bridge active, which means that like the Eidolon burns us, unless we have Bottled Cloister. Um, I think we, like, they could cast two spells and pump the Swift Spear, but it's a lot more likely that, wow, double Eidolon. Okay. So they get to cast four burn spells ever now. Uh, cracking this bobble doesn't seem very appealing to me. Uh, Teleria West. I can like transform to get a bunch of spells that would deal extreme damage to us. Uh, so I just I think I want this painless blue source so that we can whir. Yeah. Uh, maybe it would have been better to just play the Spire of Industry and pay the life to her. Probably. I guess what we'd maybe transmute for a second chalice. Uh, I think we need Thopter Foundry here to just gain life. Like, my experience is if you're facing down these Eidolons, gaining life is really where it's at. Uh, we could also. I don't have enough artifacts to sacrifice to the Thopter Foundry. To like ambush one of these Eidolons. Let's see, blue, 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 one, two. Thopter Foundry. I mean, like, we could sacrifice the Thopter Foundry and the Bauble to itself and then have both tokens block the Eidolon. It's, like, a little extreme. I take three. I guess we can just take three. We'll just take three. I 
want to keep the Thopter Foundry around, like getting a sword here is, I think, the best path out. Boris Charm. So we're looking at going down to two. Wait. Oh, I didn't block. I'm sorry, guys. I, uh... Man. Yeah, yeah, I forgot to block. I thought we were blocking. Missed a whole turn and a block step. I didn't sleep enough last night. That's too bad. I feel like um, that game was in an interesting place. I think maybe we actually did want to sacrifice like the foundry and the bauble to kill one of the Eidolons. We're taking like a lot of pressure off of us. Yeah. I can play Moto still. Like, um, I was really interested in the way that game was going. Like, they had a lot of cards stranded in hand, so like the Chalice was doing really good work. And I'm not sure that I've ever beaten like double Eidolon before. Like, that's just their best hand and their best card against us. And so, you know, I was curious to see if. The chalice was going to help us like find a path that did that. Um, I think we keep this hand. Like, it, it basically has everything that we want. We have Thopter Foundry. We have Bridge. We have Word to either make the Foundry or Bridge better. And we have redundancy against Thoughtseize. Yeah, I think... So them taking the bridge is interesting. It tells me that they probably have something like Assassin's Trophy for this. Thopter Foundry. Um, so otherwise, like, and then they don't have another discard spell. Otherwise, I think you'd want to like take away the Foundry, and then take away the Bridge. Uh, the Spyglass is almost certainly going on something like Liliana. I guess, yeah, oh wow, we just naturally drew a sword. All right, I'll take it. Uh, we can't get KCI yet. So we're just gonna cast the sword and crack it. I guess if they have a Liliana, it's better to wait on cracking it. And we only have one activation anyway. Like, So sometimes they can respond to you breaking your sword by destroying your foundry, so if we want to activate this more than once for sure. Um, ooze. Alright, we'll do this in response to the ooze. So because we have an active Thopter Sword and they have a scavenging ooze, this is one of the few cases where I prioritize spy classing the ooze. Alright, so we don't need Damping Sphere here, we don't need Witchbane or Bottled Cloister does all the work that Witchbane or would do. Uh, Chalice is... 
it's kind of bad against them, right? They just have a bunch of like Thought Seizes and like maybe Lightning Bolt, but most of their cards don't cost one, and by the time Chalice is down, they've probably already done the damage. Uh, we definitely want Tezzeret, they're attacking our hand aggressively. And Grid is very good against our Confidant. And they are going to bring in all these destroy effects against us. Their deck isn't that fast, and uh, they're breaking up our artifacts, so Opal's a little weaker here. So I think this is how many sideboard. Uh, there's some argument for bringing in like Grafdigger's Cage against Ancient Grudge, but they don't usually have it, and if they do, they don't have that many copies of it. Um, yeah, this hand is good. We've got redundant words to go with a sword, and sword is. Uh, Thopter Sword is just a huge problem for them. Like, Lingering Souls is a very good card against Jund, and Thopter Sword is just kind of the best Lingering Souls ever. Interesting. Double Sword is nice. It lets you, if you have it in play, uh, be like very comfortable tapping out, even if they potentially have Surgical Extraction. Uh, I do want to get this like grid going on these Dark Confidants. I feel like the games that they win are games where they have Dark Confidant or Tireless Tracker. And just kind of have so much card advantage that all of your welding jars aren't enough. Um, so we're gonna play the shores. I think I'm gonna play grid now before I can like potentially lose it. Right, because we can't go infinite with Thopter Sword. And we can't work for it this turn. It's kind of mana inefficient to cast something that's not a three. So ideally what I want is to work for Thopter Foundry next turn, use the Thopter Foundry and a sword to kill the confidant, kill one of the confidants. And then once we have Thopter Sword plus Grid, every mana we spend gives us like a new Thopter and an untapped sword, so it's a full point of damage. Now, it's possible that like right, we don't have a bridge yet, and these confidants might just like beat us down. Hulgan's command, and then they're getting spell bomb us. Fair, tough but fair. So we have one, two, three. If we have this glimmer void, we need to whir for one to not lose it. Yeah, I guess we have to. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, we have a Dark Slick Shores, so we can war for zero. And next turn we could war for two. So I think we play the Shores. This turn we'll war for zero. And then next turn we'll war for bridge. Um, I don't, yeah. It's not a great plan, but it does get us like Welding Jar plus Bridge, and then we have the grids up. Having these confidence stay alive is infuriating. 
But, you know, this deck plays a lot of, like, very strong interactive cards against us, and drawing three cards a turn is a uh, totally valid Magic the Gathering strategy. Oh, the Spire of Industry does not make blue. Okay, so I... I fuck this up. I need to play Glimmer Void and then Whir for, like, Welding Jar. So we could Whir for two now. But Whir for two doesn't really help us. So we're going to play this. Foundry. They're going to crack their Nihil Spell Bomb and Responds. Probably. I guess they don't need to. They're going to do it. Like, there's no reason not to. And they're just, right, like, afraid that we could do anything that would bring these two swords back. And we can play Glimmer Void. And this one, we can pay blue, blue. Blue. I guess we go down to five and then we'll die. I mean, what is our out here? Use the foundry to do what? Like, to make a thopter? Uh, so improvise isn't like, um, the Celestia mechanic. It, um, you can only pay the colorless cost with improvise. So I think our only chance is that these Dark Confidants deal like 7 to our opponent and we can grid them for the last point of damage. I think our sideboard plan is fine. I think we mostly just drew things in the wrong order. Chalice is better on the play. Like, they could just like thought seize us once, but we can strand the rest of their thought seizes and inquisitions and lightning bolts. <laughs> um, so I don't think we necessarily need to be able to go infinite against them. And. We don't need all the spyglasses. The spyglass is good. I'm gonna bring in just like two chalices. Like if we draw one, great. If we don't, that's fine. Maybe just play one chalice. Play one chalice. I think the spyglasses are just so good against their slimes and Liliana's. One chalice means that we can Teleri West for it to turn off like bolts if we need to. Like to play first. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, no lands, can't keep this. We'll keep this. Grid. Uh, I know Grid is good intellectually. It looks so like harsh, it's not an artifact, they're blowing up our artifacts, but like killing Dark Confidant's a pretty big deal, so I think, I think it has to be in here post board, even though it doesn't necessarily feel great. How's it going, Brian? Is, uh, is your employee uh, happy that they uh, used their prime to support me this month? Have they heard about you uh, ruthlessly hacking into their computer? Yeah, if we could use, um, man, if Thopter Foundry made colored mana for war, that'd just be outrageously great. Uh, we'll keep this. 
Yeah, I think we do need another land, another blue land. This doesn't cast Foundry. It doesn't cast Grid. I guess we need another land, but we don't need this land. So like, right, turn two we can cast Inventor's Fair. But we need more, need more gas, we need more colors. I've been thinking about trying to play uh, Mindstorm Crown in this matchup, which uh, if you haven't heard of Mindstorm Crown, it's a three mana artifact. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card. Let's see, so Foothills, Catacombs, Mire. So you can't turn their mana base off. They have too many different names. So I think I'm supposed to either name like Fulminator Mage, they probably only have two and they didn't necessarily bring it in. Liliana or Ooze. I think I named Liliana here. Like, we don't really have much going on. We don't have the lands we need to cast all of our spells. And so, like, her plus weighing us would be pretty savage. Uh, Ooze doesn't really hurt us right now. Like, we don't have anything in our graveyard we care about. It does eventually hose the sword combo, so, like, uh, naming an Ooze eventually is a huge game. But especially, like, uh, once we've boarded in Spell Skites, like, Liliana being able to kill our Spell Skites is a huge problem. Like, we really want the Spell Skites to trade with a Shatter type effect. And so, uh, I think sometimes you name Ooze first, particularly when you have, like, Thopter Sword available. Uh, they don't have a Lightning Bolt right now that we know about. So like, you, you can name both, but I think, especially in this particular situation where uh, they drew a bolt. Perfect. Um, Like, uh, them drawing exactly Bolt, like, is the one card we don't know about. It feels pretty bad there. Like, obviously the Spell Sky absorb a fair chunk of damage. But it would been nice to keep it alive longer. Uh, is there anything we can draw that where we don't die? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, yeah, we don't have a foundry, we don't have a bridge, our grid isn't active. Now we're probably just dead on the spot. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, like, we can't draw two cards. So, like, there's no way to get, like, land plus bridge. And even that wouldn't cover us, so... So death. Um, yeah, here, not having like faithless looting to manipulate our hands feels like it really, really hurts. Like I felt like I don't know. Like chalice is obviously good against some of our harder matchups, but it raises our curve. And it just doesn't do enough. Like I felt happy with any ham that has were and or like looting. 
like this is like a perfect example. Uh, chalice would be like faithful suiting, and spyglass would be pithy needle, and like we'd be looking at a hand that was going to, you know, be in the sword, turn one, like have two more chances of casting foundry, and then like. You know, could either work for Foundry on turn three, or if we found a Foundry naturally, just kind of go infinite with KCI. So, Darksteel Citadel into Memnite. I'm going to assume this is classic affinity. And. They don't. They didn't have a spring leaf drum, so they're on a bunch of two drops. So I think we'll spyglass or we'll sword this turn and just try and set up our Thopter Foundry. They don't deal very well with Thopters. Okay. So here, I think Spyglassing Ravager is the plan. Like we could, we, we can't were for Sword yet anyway, or for Foundry because we don't have enough permanents. I guess we could play Chalice for zero. That this should be fine. Like, they probably wanted to activate their Ravager in response to in response to what we just did, um, and maybe have made their ink. I guess they would have had to transfer to Memnite. Yeah, I guess they don't have really great choices there. So pests are interesting because they can attack under bridge. Uh, could we have Chalice Zero into War for Foundry? Yes. And then we'd have Fourth Opters? Yes. We could have definitely done that. And that possibly would be better than this line, since we would have had enough blockers for all their attackers. Yep, yeah, I think maybe the Chalice for Zero line is better there. So the only really scary creature here is the Ink Moth Nexus. Um, like, which they're not even going to attack with. Right, they're just going to do all damage. All these guys will trigger. And we'll make a Thopter, conveniently a flying creature. And I don't think they left their Galvanic Blast out. And we'll just kill. I guess this guy represents. We'll just block the most damage right now. Even though the pests represent more ability to add damage in the future, because we're able to make all these Thopters. Uh, do we care about two Galvanic Blasts? Probably. So I think we can block six points of flying damage with two Thopters, go up to nine. We're not getting Galvanic Blasted. Frenzy. Frenzy's pretty exciting. Like, I've been thinking a lot about playing Frenzy Affinity decks. 
I kind of want to play like Chromatic Star and Terrarian in the decks so that you can draw past uh, lands or other expensive cards when you hit them. Uh, which of course then leads me to want to play uh, Trawler. And here I think we can start attacking. We can make five Thopters to block with. Like, I mostly want to focus on defense, because I think we're just in a position where as long as we don't lose, we'll win. Like, because they can't burn us out. Like, they just have to go incredibly wide, and... As long as we don't waste any of our creatures... I think they shouldn't... Even with... Experimental Frenzy, I don't think they can outwide us. Right, like we get to just spend every mana every turn to make a guy, and I think Frenzy, like, even when things go well, they can't make more than like four or five guys a turn. Uh, so they have like three, four, four attackers. So I think we just get to attack with all these. Like, our life total's going up, so even if they got through with a couple, it wouldn't be a big deal. They don't have anything like Steel Overseer to make their Ornithopters and Nexuses eat us. You know, I think short of like them playing something like Distortion Strike, I have trouble imagining how they can get through our board. Alright, that's a cute trick with the Nexus. I think this next turn we should have enough Thopters to kill them. Which is good, because the Steel Overseer would have made things more difficult. Um, maybe we can't kill them next turn. They have two blockers. And we can make six Thopters. No. Yeah, we're just like one short. And now with Vault Scourge, it's definitely not possible. The, uh, yeah, this Experimental Frenzy deck, I think it's super sick. I think, I think the good place to be with that deck is actually, um, somewhere between Affinity and KCI. Like, I think if you play like Trawler, and if you play like Trawler in it, you can start recurring your chromatic stars and stuff, and like because Frogmite and Mirror Enforcer cost a lot, uh, do some like pretty exciting chains with Arcbound Ravager. I'm not sure that if you need KCI once you have like Arcbound Ravager, but it's something I want to play with. All right, so we don't need Damping Sphere. They do target us with. Um, Galvanic Blast, so Witch Brain Orb isn't crazy, that's not amazing. We don't really need to go infinite with the Ironworks, though it's a fine option. Uh, Spell Skate is kind of good against Ravager, because it stops Ravager from redistributing tokens. Let's see. So Spyglass is very good against Cranial Plating. Okay, so we want our first Spellscape for sure. I guess Witchbane Orb is expensive. Spellscape does a lot of the same job. It doesn't do the same job perfectly, but we have Chalices, so I don't think we're going to have to like deal with a lot of Galvanic Blasts. Maybe Chalice isn't that good against them. Like, yeah, maybe Chalice isn't good. So we can, like, bring in our Spell Skites. Uh, bring our... Oh, Damping Sphere! I guess if they're trying to, like, chain a bunch of spells off of Frenzy is actually kind of good. 
then we'll just keep in the witchbane orb so we can't get burnt out. Grid is pretty reasonable against them though. Mm. I'll bring in these grids. Alright, we'll try it this way. Maybe we're supposed to have Witchbane Orb over Ironworks. So we have two zeros and a sword. We're on the draw. Uh, I think this hand's risky. There's lots of ways to not get there. And it's not even amazing if we draw a land. Uh, this hand's obviously unkeepable. So I guess we'll run with this. Spire. We need an artifact to go with Spire, but it does make red mana for our grids. I'm reasonably comfortable banking and drawing an artifact. I think, I think we're playing 40 of them, maybe 36. Thirty-two. <laughs> Thanks, Tog. <laughs> I guess oh, I mean right, wars aren't artifacts. That's fair. <laughs> that is a big mem night. Should be like some rules about how big a mem knight's allowed to be and like that mem knight it seems clearly in excess. Um, so next turn we can play Spire unless we draw another zero. Actually even with another zero we still can't bridge. So I think they're just wow. Just gonna present us with a turn three kill. Good, good, good. Um, I don't think I want to do anything different. I just want them to go a little slower. I, guess, I mean, like Chalice on zero hits Mem Knight, hits Mox. It's much better on the play. Like we can play all of our zeros and then just punish them. I have to like cut grid to do that probably. And like this iron works. Uh... We might not need bottle cloister, but I don't want to cut Bottled Cloister. They do have a lot of zeros. And with like plating, maybe they can just get around Cloister. They're supposed to get lower to the ground. We've heard of the Grinding Station combo deck. We ended up playing against it a couple matches ago. It seems pretty sweet. Alright, we'll try this. Um, I think we just can't go one land. I think we'll keep this. This seems fine. Uh, yeah, the Grinding Station combo deck. Um, the interaction between Grinding Station and Sword of the Meek is pretty impressive. 
uh, do we want this third land? Yeah, I think another land is actually good here. So we'll drop this. Play this opal. Um, having like so many ways to combo is pretty interesting. It can make it hard to shut down all those angles. But, uh, right, you need to like, yeah, grinding station and looting together is, is definitely a thing. Alright, so we will blue, black, so, so we have bridge. Available next turn. I guess that makes their overseer much worse. They don't have. They do have an ink moth nexus. I feel like that ink moth nexus plus ravager. Uh, that feels really dangerous to me. But we can, I guess we use this Inventor's Fair and cast Ensnaring Bridge. We'll have, the Opal can like be sacrificed to the Thopter Foundry. We can have a blocker for the Ink Moth Nexus. Because they, right, like they activate their Steel Overseer, it's at two. Ravager eats one, two, three, four, five, six, and it has two counters, seven, eight. Yeah, so that's a le lethal nexus. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty interesting idea. Like, Faithful Looting is a card that we've really liked with. Yeah, so this has to sacrifice. And of course they have the line of play of just activating the Steel Overseer so that their Ink Moth doesn't die and dealing a bunch of vanilla damage to us. But if all their guys get big, then our Ensnaring Bridge is suddenly way better. Like, now only their Ornithopter should be able to attack next turn. Uh, but once again, we're kind of in a position where if we don't have an artifact to sacrifice, ooh, rest in peace. Very timely rest in peace. Um, so we can were for. I mean, the thing that we actually want to work for here is Bottled Cloister, which I cut. I basically need to write myself a note that says, never under any circumstances cut Bottled Cloister. It's always the best. Literally always the best. All right, so blue, blue, blue. I guess we don't have enough permanence to get Bottled Cloister here, but still. Um, I guess if we get a Sorcerer's Spyglass, we can turn off their Ink Moth Nexus. But more importantly, we can turn off their Ravager. I think turning off Arcbound Ravager is just where it's at here. Now they don't have the ability to like move a bunch of their tokens. And they can hit us with this Ornithopter, but that's about it. And they're even moving their Ornithopter out of being able to attack this range. And 
And at this point, uh, I mean, at this point, we can just kill them by decking. In theory, they could burn us to death. And I guess they could draw a zero. So they have like some some ways to win here. Uh, I think we have grid in post board, so I guess we don't need to worry about decking them. We can just eventually grid them out. So we can go get some relevant artifact to this situation. Wait, no, we took... I guess we took grid back out? Okay, we weren't expecting the rest in peace, so... Um, and we also don't have... So I think we need Chalice. I think we're just casting Chalice for one. So now we're no longer decking them. Right, we have a sword. Uh, the reality is this welding jar is not super useful to us. Man, all their guys are big. So our game plan at this point is fundamentally that we have to assemble flyers that are big enough to attack them. They're 20. They have Steel Overseer and Vault Scourge. Uh, they have their own grid. Amazing. Uh, one, two, three. This person is killing us in the side de sideboard department. Like, we're getting absolutely crushed at sideboarding here. Uh, Ancient Grudge. It's possible. Um... Like, I think, I mean, we, right, we've seen the rest in peace, we've seen the grid. Uh, I mean, grudge is a good card in, like, sideboard, like, in mirrored matches. So, like, I'm willing to put pretty much anything in this person's range at this point. Double welding jar, so we should crack this bottle. I'm not concerned about Ancient Grudge at this point, like they could have it, but it doesn't like kill us or anything. So we got a spyglass. The spyglass is going to stop them from killing us with their grid. We might have to sacrifice something to the Thopter Foundry. I just, uh, I think I took away, like, our path to victory. Like, they'd have to... Cast Frenzy and like play some cards. Um, how useful is Sword of the Make? Not terribly. Uh, this thing on Ravager is still good. I think I need to sacrifice one of these welding jars. Like, in theory, I could build a Thopter that's bigger than 
his flying creatures if he doesn't activate his Steel Overseer a bunch. And he hasn't really been activating it since he can't attack. I'm also worried about like walking Ballista here. Okay, so now we can name Gear Per Ether Grid. Play this. Yeah, so the path we have here is doesn't activate his Steel Overseer. We get a Thopter equipped with multiple Swords of the Meek so that it can slowly like crush its way through his uh, you know, assorted flying creatures. We've lost zero swords so far, so that's that's a viable plan. This is something that I guess I do a lot when you know my graveyard gets turned off unexpectedly. Uh, the signal pass being able to attack is not a huge deal. Oh no, the signal pass being able to attack is actually a huge, huge problem. Because it's it means our opponent's going to trigger his steel overseer. And I should have broken the opal and then equipped a sword to it, so it was a two three. Right, we got kind of lucky that he didn't attack there. Uh, so we cast Chalice on zero. And then sacrifice it to turn it into a Thopter. So I'll sacrifice the Opal and I'll just leave this Chalice hanging out for a while. Since our opponent also has zeros. Alright, they have a grudge. They only get the front end of the grudge. Because of their unrest in peace, so that's actually kind of nice for us. And then we'll equip the Thopter. So now if they attack with their signal pass, it's just going to its own death, so they're not likely to attack with it and then activate the Overseer. Thopter Engineer. Okay, not a big deal. It is another flying creature. Oh man, we don't have Bottled Clayster. I actually don't know if we can win without Bottled Clayster. Like our Thopter, because of our own ensnaring bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think decking is the only way we could win here, and I'm not sure how we can get to deck them. Let's see. What else can we think of? We don't have Tezzeret, we don't have Unmoored Ego. Tezzeret would let us burn them out. Yeah, I mean, if we added Grinding Station, we'd be set. They'd probably have been already milled to death by now. Uh, they have Double Black. Yeah, Shredder would kill them. Like yeah, any any alternate win condition that wasn't grid could kill them. But we would have actually, I mean, if we had one, it would have been grid, so we would have shut off our own grids at this point. It, I think it just comes down to Bottled Cloister. If we had Bottled Cloister, we would have a path. So I wonder, like, we can, we have, we have like four bridges. I wonder if what we actually need to do is 
set this up so that we can like destroy our own bridges and attack while they're gone and then like recast a bridge. I mean we could set up four attack steps. Our creatures we can have two three five thopters so they can attack for six. The Volt Scourge is the biggest problem. Gain so much life off of the Volt Scourge now. Like, they just have to cast a Frenzy and play some cards off of it. Maybe they don't have Frenzy in this matchup post board. Like, their expectation should be that we have another win condition. I'm not sure if they have another win condition. This is one thing I liked about playing the Shredder version. Like, when we had the Shredder version, we had a backup win condition that didn't involve combat. Which turns out to be incredibly handy. So they're thinking, maybe they have Frenzy and they're thinking about whether or not they want to use it, or they're trying to figure out if they have a path to winning. All right, so let's go back to the, we can attack four times theory. Like, we have to attack with things with three power, otherwise the Vault Scourge just gets to eat a random thing. They gain 15 life. Like, if they just... Oh, they have another Vault Scourge. There's, like, no way to win, win through vanilla attacks here. Yeah, if we have, like, a Nihiri or a... Or Tesseret, we'd be fine. I guess the lesson here might be if you're not playing against like one of the really heavily meta defined decks, you should expect more of anything and just leave in extra win conditions just to be careful. Uh, I think we'll, we'll just scoop this game and go to the next one, I think. I don't think we have a path to winning, and with our opponent just sitting here, it's not that interesting to keep trying. Um... Hmm. Like, I don't think Tezzeret is a card I would normally think to play against Affinity, but... I guess Classic Affinity is just so good at casting anything of any color that they have access to all the good hate cards. So, uh, I hate Karma. Looking at your Teferi's grinding deck. Memnite, Ornithopter, Scrap Troller, Sly Requisitioner. Which this guy combos has a lot of combos, were grinding station. Yeah, this is exactly what we played against. <coughs> it looks sweet. Looks like it can do a lot of different powerful things. Uh, we need a second land. So I'm gonna keep And we probably need a third mana source, so 
especially when that makes black. That'll help us either get to Thopter Foundry uh, or were. So we're probably, we'll get to cast one one drop. Man, it's like the Rubbins, they're casting my favorite spell against us. And they, they are going to try and cast a lot of 1CMC spells, so casting Chalice against them is great, just great. Um, we have two permanents, so we can definitely sacrifice our first Mistress Bauble. It's not going to hurt any of our worrying. And since we don't have a Sword or a Foundry in play, we can actually just take off the next turn to cast the other one. So it, we can break both of these bubbles. Uh, the only reason not to is if we had, say, like a bridge on top. Sword. Yeah. I guess we have our plays for next turn, so we can we can wait on cracking this other one to make our bridges function better. Uh, so we'll play a fair. So we start taking up on life. Play a bridge or a sword, and then I think we're going to crack this next bobble. I think we're, we're well under the threshold that they're going to attack through by playing. We'll have like four cards next turn and play two of them. And as long as you're under, under three cards, their phoenixes can't attack you. Sweet. So we got the Thopter Foundry naturally. And we have the mana up to play, pay for an Is It Charm. And now we just get to start Thoptering while they're under Chalice, which seems solid. kind of just like a nightmare matchup for them. Um, they're going to bring in destroy effects and these spy glasses basically do nothing here. So we'll bring in a bunch of spell skites. Uh, they play like surgical extraction. But that's usually pretty easy to play around. Um, they don't really have enough burn that we need the witchbane orb or the ironworks. And so think that we can either play Grid or Tesseret as like alternate win conditions. I think Tesseret's probably a little bit better because they do try and go like very attrition on us. We have Chalice and a Jar to protect it and Spell Skate. I think this is going to slow them down considerably. Yeah, we have Tezzer to like make more lock pieces. I assume we'll probably draw you know, two mana sources by the time it's turn three or four. It's not a bad pickup. Not quite enough to get to, you know, Chalice on turn one, but you know, it is going to be one of these mana sources to casting Tezzeret. So if they're not casting a thing, we're probably looking at something like Is It Charm? And 
given that, instead of casting the Chalice into it, I'm just going to cast Spell Skite, since it's a creature and is it Charm can't counter a creature. Like, they could also have like Spell Pierce there. Uh, Ceremonious Rejection is the other possibility, but they probably would have only held one mana up if that was what they were holding. So yeah, I think maybe they have a, a counter-heavy hand here. Uh, the Teleria West, I don't think we're ready to transmute it. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of restricted on what we're casting by our mana right now. So I like getting another mana source in play. And next turn, we'll be able to have two extra lands to when we try and like Chalice. So I think we'll try and Chalice on one next turn. And they, you know, with the two mana up versus is it Charm or Spell Pierce. So Thing in the Ice, our spell skates are horrors, so they won't be bounced when Thing in the Ice flips. And they're, they're holding up red blue again. I think pretty hard confirmation of is it charm? I guess I mean we could cast chalice on two, uh, but they have so many ones, and then they could just counter it. So, all right, silly idea, not worth pursuing. And I could cast the sword of the meek into their is it charm. But there's the possibility that they're playing Surgical Extraction, and I don't want to uh, like just lose my sword. So we'd very much like a bridge here. Thopter Foundry. Alright, so we can try this. We'll probably resolve. Like, unless they have like Pierce and is a charm at this point. And if that's the, if it resolves, I'm going to play the Opal and then cast Sword of the Mink. If they counter the sword, um, I'll just leave it in the graveyard. And like, if they try and surgical extraction it, then I would sacrifice the opal to itself. Uh, it looks like maybe they have two counter spells here. Or maybe, like, I don't know, they don't usually play anything like Logic Knot. But of course, not every list, you know, strictly conforms. <sighs> okay. So, do we want to cast the opal and then the sword? I think so. Uh, I guess we don't care about Spell Pierce because of the Chalice. Yeah, like, this board position feels pretty commanding for us. Like, even though the things in the ice can b bounce Thopters. Um, we can activate it after, and like they have to cast all the spells in their hand to trigger their things. I mean, sure, I guess some of their spells are like two spells. Uh, we can chump block a thing with like a spell skite and then regenerate with a welling jar. There's the is it charm that we've been playing around.
So they should be able to construct kind of like the perfect hand here. Drake. Drake is not remotely scary. So they could still have surgical extraction in their hand. And now this next turn, we could cast Tesseret while their shields are down, but it doesn't help. But we just make a bunch of Thopters. Uh, feels nice to have a game go according to script, I feel like. I guess yesterday when we were trying Chalice, I think we drew pretty well, and so... Like, not having ways to control our hand felt okay. Today, it feels like, you know, we're drawing slightly below average, and it... It's felt like it's been really painful not to have ways to control our hand. So maybe like Chalice has a higher ceiling but a lower floor and just like higher variance. At this point I'd want to see specifically whether like Chalice changed the KCI matchup, which is currently like very bad without Chalice. And if it changed it, I think about it. I think if it doesn't change the KCI matchup though, it might just be out. You agree you didn't miss looting much yesterday, but I've wanted it several times today. Yeah, like, it just felt like yesterday, we, I don't know how many times I said we're very lucky, but I think it was like over five. I think I've only said it once today. And like, right, like I know every, every card counts with ensnaring bridge against, well, I guess we're playing against humans right now, so we'll have a, a little proof of concept. But like, right, just one card can change whether or not like five creatures can attack you within Staring Bridge. So having like exactly the right count is pretty critical. But this is like, this is one of the very hard things about tuning a deck that's good, right? Like you win often and it's really hard hard to necessarily figure out like why you're winning or losing in any given situation. So right, if they have a meddling mage here and they name Sword, we're gonna be in a pretty tough spot, you know. Right, like if we have looting, yeah, you can like loot sort of way in the situation, in exactly the situation. Now we have to draw a bridge and or like a blue source and were for bridge. Yeah. All right, bobble. Bobble's going to help us dig deeper. It can also be sacrificed to buy us time. Double mana strider. Okay, I think we just named Horizon Canopy here. It probably doesn't matter, but that's like a way they might draw cards if somehow this game goes long. This deck is quite tricky to pilot, especially against more tight matchups, which makes tuning even more difficult. Yeah, that's true. Right, like if you're not already good at piloting the deck, like it's hard to know what's like pilot error versus play error. I mean, I guess pilot error and play error are the same, but like versus like deck building error. Second meddling mage. So now they name bridge or were, and we're just down to like a few outs. Yeah, bridge seems like the right call since we're showing an inventor's fair. Oh, but they have made, I guess we only have one mana open. I was gonna say, I think they've made a grave error, but I don't think we can, we can't kill either of these guys. So do we take seven? I think we just take seven.
And then we'll look at their next card. It's a vial. And we'll crack the spyglass. So they actually, there's not that much they can attack us with. See, this is why I pack main board pyrite spell bombs. That's legit. Like, but if I had faithful city, I wouldn't need a main board pyrite spell bomb. But uh, I'm not, I'm not against pyrite spell bomb. I think it's a pretty sweet card. Uh, do we have any twos left that we care about? I guess doing this for two doesn't really stop anything important. A lot of their things are twos. They're just going to get a vial though, so the vial is going to stop us from being relevant. But we can sack it as soon as it's inconvenient. Sure, let's do this. Oh no no! Uh, terrible. What I was supposed to do is leave the mana up so they couldn't attack with any of their like meddling mages or freebooters. Instead, I've let them attack again. Four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I have made a tragic error. <laughs> I was just probably supposed to like chalice for zero. And then they can only attack with the champion and the mana strider. So now I just have two things I can sacrifice, and we're dead. So let's see if, if another two draw steps would have gotten us anywhere. No. So we would have lost anyway, but bad line of play. Leaving the mana open to threaten their, their two drop creatures is definitely where it's at. I mean, I think like one pirate spell bomb like main is totally defensible. I think even like one knee heal spell bomb can like radically change your matchup against KCI. I'm not sure exactly which cards you cut to make those things happen, but those are things that can be desirable. Alright, we definitely want grid in this matchup. They're not targeting us. We don't really need to go infinite. They can't have small guys that we want to, you know, lock down with the bridge, so like Cloister. I don't Maybe you just never cut Cloister. Maybe there's not a single matchup where you cut Cloister. They're not chaining out a bunch of things. We don't need these damping spheres. Uh, Spike, like they, they're casting Native Autumn. Spells gets pretty good against them. Like it can just block guys early. Turper Orb hurts quite a few of their creatures, and we can just sack it if it's a problem for us. We don't need Spyglasses, like hitting Vial isn't that good, especially not for two mana. Like, Pithy Needle is slightly better, but still not really worth it. Yeah, I think this is where we want to be. So we'll battle here. They have an early bridge. They have a double bridge, so even if they have a way to destroy it, I think, I think we. I think this is a pretty easy keep. Um, we need this mana from the Teleria West, so I'm just going to play a tap now. Obviously, like meddling mage on ensnaring bridge will be a total blowout here. So we can hope that doesn't happen. Uh, I'll play both of these Welding Jars because if they cast Thalia, they'll get trapped in my hand. All right, so Freebooter is the less scary thing they can do there. It makes sense. I think they usually lead on Freebooter if they have Freebooter and Meddling Mage so that their Meddling Mage can target correctly. <laughs> Great. 
grid is going to be a pretty nice follow up. Like, almost so nice that I'd want to lead on grid, but um, we don't have the fourth artifact to kill the meddling mage. Like, if they play Kataki here, is this like Sin Eater? Sure. And Kambal is like one of many creatures that are like slightly annoying, and, and by slightly annoying, I mean can potentially lose you the game if left unchecked. Where, like, having grid in your deck means everything. Uh, here, we could have word for Bottled Cloister. But... I just want to get this grid on the table to deal with, like, Medley Major, Agatic Teague. Uh, we can also kill this Freebooter and save ourselves the one damage. Yeah. And I think even seeing the Kambul doesn't change our plans any. We're still happy with this configuration. Okay. Um, man, yeah. These chalices are just. Like, this is obviously the matchup where Chalice is at its worst. It's just, like, so underwhelming. What I want is to be able to, like, pitch the Sword of the Meek into my graveyard with, like, a looting and, like, set my bridge up to be better and increase my chance of drawing lands. I haven't minded the Teleri West. Like, uh, I'm only playing two copies, so they're not coming in tap too often. Talk when you say it sounds familiar. Um, you're saying like I said that last match or last game, or uh, are you saying like that's a way that you sometimes feel? Um, I think we're just supposed to chalice for zero for one mana. Like. We shut off our own zeros. Yuck. Yeah, this seems just like super bad. I don't think we should do it. <laughs> but like, the only way that we're going to make it out of this game is if they don't present a significant clock. Right, like here we're being like fully punished for having a high curve. I mean, this like freebooter is just helping us. I don't care what they take. Maybe I'll care later, but <laughs> we're like just so far from bridge here, and they just. I guess, I mean, taking the bridge is better. Like, it's going to take a long time to get enough artifacts in play to whir. Yeah, pray for land. Yeah, this is still very bad at this point. I agree. They took Tarfur Orb. That's like unimaginably surprising like that means that they have to be sitting on a bunch of like Thalia's lieutenants or something yeah meddling mage on sword of the meek is pretty good there Like, I think we actually just need to cast this chalice here for one. Like, I know it hurts our own cards. 
But I think to have like any chance of worrying for a bridge or for follow cloister, it, it just has to be in play. Really? What? Why would you take Torpor Orb there? Like, I feel like Bridge is the card that, like, you can't really beat. Unless they just know they have a Knight of Autumn, so they don't care. It does shut off a lot of their deck. They've probably got, like, a Knight of Autumn in hand. And so they know, like, even if I cast this Bridge... Yeah... Free looters, sure. Well, there's the Thales Lieutenant. And, yeah, this is what I was expecting, that, like, they just are massively increasing their clock with a couple Thales Lieutenants. Meddling Mage. So they're going name, bridge. Huh. Oh, I guess the Phantom is also shut off by that. Sure. All right. I can see it. It makes sense. Because if we had drawn a land, we still couldn't have cast the bridge, and they knew they were just going to Meddling Mage. What they named? Or... We've got to have a Knight of Autumn sitting back there, too. So we need to draw two more land. Yeah, you know, we're just dead here. Yeah, brutal. I think, yeah, I think unless I can cut... No, even, it's like, even if I was playing Ideas Unbound, which seems conceptually good, it still costs two mana. And, like, the problem is just, like, choking even earlier in the game. Like, Faithless Looting costing exactly one is just too important. And getting the kind of, like, pseudo-card advantage or mana advantage from, like, looting away swords is a big deal. Yeah, if you have, like... So, like, like the deck as I've been playing it, I've been playing, like, 24 total mana sources, like, 20 lands and 4 opals. But, yeah, like... And it makes the opals much better to be able to loot. Like, either you get rid of excess opals, or you find the artifacts that the opals need to turn on. And your artifacts are cheaper, because you're allowed to play one CMC cards. Uh, visions, sure. I think Visions is just much, much, much worse than Faithless Looting, but... Yay! Try out Faithless Looting. I think you'll like it. Um, I've played with both Visions and Looting. And, like, some of my experiments I'm not convinced that they're going to work before I start. Uh, like, playing Spellskite main over Welling Jar, I thought was going to be really bad, but it, it was actually very good. Um, and I think Looting, I wasn't really sure how I was going to feel about it versus, like, Serum Visions or your Stirrings, but... Obviously Stirrings is just a bust because it can't find Thopter Foundry. I guess we keep this. We get like three looks at a land. I mean, this is and this is another hand where like the chalice would be a faithless loot. <laughs> Not to harp on it too hard. I don't mean to beat this dead horse. Right, just like a deck full of combos though, assembling the combos seems really powerful. And like Ensnaring Bridge just wants you to discard cards. So it looks like we have some kind of mono red build. I guess tech oh this could be like a prison deck. This actually looks remarkably like a prison deck. Like some some deck with like Nihiri in it. There's a reasonable chance that Chalice and One doesn't actually do anything against them. I think we're supposed, still supposed to cast it. Uh, 
bridge stops that Merkel. Yeah. But I think we have, I think we have a few moments before Emrakul becomes a real big threat. I think this should be maybe like a goblin or sure Gideon planeswalker. Chalice is on top for us. Let's see, worrying. I think we're happy worrying for two. Lightning helix for them. So I think cracking both of those bottles is fine. Like we're just looking for the the right interactive tools against their deck. Uh, stopping them from getting an emblem. Like if they have their own ensnaring bridge, that emblem could be a problem. Like right, because if if they have a bridge, they can stop our Thopter foundries. I guess they're going deck first now. No, we're going deck first. So yeah, if they're if they're able to like assemble this Gideon token plus a bridge before we can kill their Gideon, uh, we'll lose. Uh, I guess if they have Emrakul, we can't really deck them. Unless they are foolish enough to get their Emrakul stuck in play. It should be a Nihiri. Lightning Helix, sure. So if we can Spyglass this Gideon, that's actually a high priority for me. I don't want to show them the sword yet. It's not like a big deal. We're just being mana efficient at this point. But uh, right, they might just think that yeah, okay, they've got it. So now we need to just get out infinite-ish thopters. A moment too late on the spyglass. So like Nihiri or Chandra, I'm going to choose Chandra. I think they play more copies of Chandra. Uh, Torch of Defiance, I think, is the one that they tend to play. I mean, I think they play both Nihiri and Chandra. Um, both of them make mana, both of them draw them cards. Four Nihiri and two Chandra. Um, sure, I, I think this isn't an established enough archetype that it, they're just going to play the same, like, always play the same numbers. So we transmute this and get an Inventor's Fair. So we did it. We transmuted to Larry West. And we actually, like, really care about what we're getting this in this case. Uh, this fair we can go get and it's probably gonna end up being another spyglass for like <laughs> assemble the legion. Sure. Like the fact that they haven't played an ensnaring bridge is a little weird. <laughs> I don't think we really care about the symbol of the Legion. It's like cute, but we're just supposed to get cloister here, because otherwise it's gonna be too hard to empty our hand. Either way, we're cracking this inventor's fair, we're not casting one of these cards. I think we're supposed to get cloister, right? Like they don't have a threat that we care about. Uh, we're missing like all the pieces for our Thopter Sword combo. I 
and I mean we have the sword, but we're like we really need the KCI part to just I think go off on them. Like they have a Wrath of God. Yeah, I think we get Cloister. So we can Spyglass and hear you next turn if that's if that's what this is coming down to. Cloister is also going to help us get extra lands to get all this stuff into play. So, do we want to play sword? Not really. One, two, three. They have their own chalices. Okay. So we'll go for Nahiri here. I mean, we kind of knew that they already had their own chalices. And they also have, they probably have, yeah, nothing that costs one themselves, so our chalice is just kind of a silly card. Let's see, what else, what else do they have that it can be a set here? So they've taken out us hard casting a foundry, so we need to be able to whir for it at this point. Um, oh man, a moment too late. Two, three, four, five. I guess at this point we should just get a sword in the graveyard. supposed to keep it secret. I think we're, we're supposed to keep it secret. We'll have plenty of mana banked like by the time it's relevant. Like we don't want them to see that they've you know hurt us in any way. I want to give the appearance that we could be like many different types of decks. Like, we could just look like a standard, like, Grixis War deck. Oh, they can see the swords. No, these are hidden from them, right? Yeah, face down. Right, if we look like a standard Grixis Prison deck, they're probably worried about us, like, ghost quartering them out. There's the whir. We can get KCI with it. So we need, we need to draw KCI or another whir. One, two, three, one, two, three. We can cast both in the same turn. So we'll cast another chalice. How do we even cast Chalice under these circumstances? Why can't we just... Okay, we can cast it for one. That's weird. Yeah. Oh, I see. Then the Trinisphere makes us... Got it. You're such a weird card, Trinisphere. Oh, they cast a Chalice in too, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, whatever. I thought we paid three mana for it, so it was going to resolve. But Tritosphere just makes you pay for it, but it doesn't change its casting cost. Seems fine. If you were for Foundry, it's le you're less likely to draw it. That's true. I guess it's better to were for it. 
but we don't want to work for it until we're ready to go infinite because we don't want them to start emptying their hand like to prioritize their own ensnaring bridge Uh, we're casting our spells into counters because I don't have a good understanding of the rules versus Trinisphere. Uh, also, uh, those spells don't matter. One bit. This matchup is all about... Ooh, Tezzeret. Hazaret. Hazard is very good with Ensnaring Bridge. They could empty their hand very quickly. So yeah, we need to like just surprise them. Also, <laughs> All right, I was gonna say we should go for Witchbane Orb. Okay, so here we go. Uh, blue, blue, blue. One, two, three, four. Do you go for KCI? So there's our ironworks. And then blue, blue, blue. One, two. For Thopter Foundry. And then. Uh, we will use this KCI to sacrifice an artifact. We'll sacrifice this Chalice of the Void, and then we'll cast a Sword of the Meek. It'll get countered. That's fine. Uh, the Sword required three mana, so we had to sacrifice an artifact to, to get it going. So they're going to try very hard to get their hand empty for ensnaring bridge. Uh, they should be able to do it. Three, three, they're going to draw a card. Like if they have an ensnaring bridge, we're too late. Like they cast it, they play a land, Hazard pitches their last card. So it's just like, do they have it yet or not? And it looks like they don't. Sweet. So we have come up with a crafty plan. And hopefully we don't have to make all of these softers and our opponent will see that we're going to infinite. They might not realize that killing this Thopter isn't going to change whether or not the sword comes back. Common misconception. They're just as striking. Our Thopter will sacrifice it. The Justice Strike is getting countered anyway. So here we go. Uh, 
Oh, we can attack both, of course. Yeah, uh, we can attack Gideon and our opponent. So, like, the immortality token just means that we need to make more Thopters. So, like, they basically just have 35 life, which is a bunch. Um, like, we'll probably have to spend about five minutes making Thopters, unless our opponent, who also plays a prison deck, appreciates just how annoying it is when people don't concede, so they have common human decency and scoop. Okay, uh, Chalice is probably a blank here. We want our additional win conditions. Uh, we want Unward Ego to like rip apart their their own prison plans. They probably play like Wear Terra Post board. We don't need Damping Sphere. Spyglass is pretty good. Um, Witchbane Orb. There's like ultimates that can target us. These Thopters are not very likely to get through again, to be honest. Like, to use the attack step, they'd have to not have an ensnaring bridge and we'd have to win pretty quickly. That seems unlikely to me. We might end up putting some of that back in. I think we want these spell skites for like wear tears. Cage stops Emrakul. Reasonable. Spyglass also stops Emrakul. I don't think they do anything else from their graveyard. I think I think Revoker and Spyglass are just the better way to fight Emrakul. Yeah. 59. Um Revoker will die. Uh, I mean, they'll probably take out their bolts, but that's fair. So I'll leave in one sword and one Thopter Foundry, just because they can do some cool things with Ether Grid. Um, I think mostly this is. Oh, there's spell skates might just die a lot too. That's fine though. They can kill some spell skates. I think I think I'll battle this way. And the nice thing of, about Unmoored Ego is, of course, is like we can hopefully see what they're up to in game two. So if we go to game three, we can sideboard perfectly or more perfectly. Another thing I'm noticing while sideboarding is without the lootings, I feel like I often have a, a few extra slots that are like suboptimal. And so I think like the lootings made every match a little more well rounded. Whereas like with Chalice, all right, there's the rest in peace. So <laughs> good thing we moved off that Thopter plan. I don't think we want to crack the bubble yet. Spyglass. I do like the information from the spyglasses. Uh, shows us nothing. Uh, I think Gideon of the Trials is really weak compared to the other Planeswalkers. But um, I want to make sure that we're still able to win. And since I don't see any of the other Planeswalkers there yet, Nahiri is the scariest. I mean, Nahiri does some awesome stuff. And she can make Emrakul. But, like, in Staring Bridge deals with the Emrakul, she can only affect tapped artifacts. Um, and we don't generally tap them on our opponent's turn, or on our turn, except for, like, Mox Opal. Oh, Tritosphere is going to make this uh, welding jar considerably more expensive than usual. Yeah. 
I do want to, I mean, we didn't see a wear tear. If we cloister here and they blow it up, <laughs> we're really far behind. Oh, I guess we can't even cast it because of the Trinosphere. So I'll just cast it here for three, and we'll just cast the Bottle of Cloister next turn. And we'll start drawing two cards a turn, which will make us lose the decking race, but we're probably losing the decking race already. We're just hard casting Simeon Spirit Guy to, to beat us for two. I'll take it. Should not have used the opal. Just we we're just talking about Nihiri only hitting tap, tapped artifacts. I guess I guess if they destroy a mana source and cost Nihiri several turns, I don't feel too bad. I don't like them playing Trinisphere. I guess they probably don't have a lot of other options. It doesn't feel that good against us. So the rest of the pieces aren't that scary. The stony silences are definitely worse. <coughs> like if I had an unward ego relatively soon, I could see that being the right card to name. So I think we're on grid here. We don't have a spell skate to protect it from where. But I, I like I like the notion of like clocking them. I guess that Trinisphere is fine. It's cost us a lot of mana. Like we've been able to double spell that turn otherwise. So I'm gonna take the two because um, I don't want any of my artifacts exiled by Nahiri. Is this a Legion? Sure. I think Legion is also not a very scary thing. So I don't actually care about this ape. I'm just going to play a bridge to blanket. Uh, they're totally out of cards. And I think I think we're just going to get to burn them out. Like, they'd have to top deck Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring would be pretty good here. Like, they could Oblivion Ring our Ensnaring Bridge, and we don't have a spell skate to redirect. Uh, I think Oblivion Ring is in, like, the range of what they play. Okay, so we won. Yeah, I guess that ends the uh, the Chalice of the Void experiment. I have to say, you know, when I first started playing with Chalice of the Void, like, when I first picked up the Grixis War control deck, right, my opinion was it was very good in some matchups and, like, pretty mediocre in others. And by mediocre, I mean, like, almost blank. Um, you know, it seemed like it might be necessary to play against Tron, but we found Unmoored Ego, and Unmoored Ego gives us an answer to Tron. And so, like, the last matchup that I'm just trying to figure out is KCI. Uh, and I think, like, Chalice is probably, like, reasonable against KCI. But we still got, like, you know, I know it wasn't, like, a standard KCI deck, but we still got ripped up by a KCI deck. They are obviously not playing a bunch of eggs, so that, that's not a very good test. But... I feel like the percentage we're losing across the field is just not worth what Chalice is giving us. Right? Like, KCI is like, I don't know, 3 to 7% of the metagame tops. And I feel like having Chalice helps us against Tron, which is already, I think, a great matchup. And it helps us against Death Shadow, but I think it like maybe like gives us 10% in that matchup. Maybe 15%. Um, but that's also like, you know, another 5% of the metagame. 
I think we're probably losing like 5% against a ton of matches. So I think like Chalice is just a net negative. Also, I just, it makes, I feel less happy, right? Like playing Magic, I think your emotional state is important. And when I have looting, I feel like I have control over my destiny and my hands feel better. Or like Chalice, it just feels like I'm gambling. So uh, that's my opinion on Chalice. <coughs> I think I think I'm going to phase it out and go in a different direction. Um, yeah. So I think I think that's that. Um, no stream tomorrow. I should be back on Thursday. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have another experiment like this, or I'm really interested in Affinity Frenzy decks. And maybe I'll have like an experimental like affinity frenzy build. So I'll I'll, I'll see. Uh, otherwise, I think that like that wraps up our stream for today, our laboratory. And I think we can look for someone else to raid. So let's see, Twitch. Who have you got for us? Thank you all for being around. If you enjoyed the stream, I encourage you to follow me. Uh, I also spend a lot of my time doing this, so if you're enjoying the content, subscribing helps me, uh, I guess, decide to get keep doing this instead of having to go and do something less fun with my time. Is nobody playing modern? I guess there's a like a standard uh, streamers challenge. So I think a lot of streamers are playing in the challenge right now. Goblins versus the world legacy. Limited. Yeah. All right. Legacy got oh modern abs and enchantments. I'm in. Any kind of brew in modern seems awesome. So this is Mom's Basement Streams. So we're going to raid them. Raid Mom's Basement Streams. <laughs> um, I like Enchantment Control decks. I'm pretty excited to see what this guy's got going on.